We are good, 6.15 precisely. Yeah, good, thank you. So uh, thank you all for joining this session. Uh, you know, it was always a challenge on the time we should pick. So uh, we picked at 6.15 just before the drinks in the hope that, you know, people will not drinks the, miss the drinks party. They might miss the session, of course. Yeah. So we don't know, right? So, so thank you all. Uh, we are going to talk about uh, modernize your application to accelerate digital transformation. Uh, and I'm from JK Tech. I'm Ram Kumar. I head the European business uh, for JK Tech. Uh, I'll talk about JK Tech also, what we do. My colleague is here, Shirish. Uh, he's a principal architect, right? And I'm, I'm the front end, he's the back end, right? So he does all the work and I take all the credit, right? And I have with me Andrew, who's our customer uh, from AF Blackmore. Uh, they have worked with us for many years. He will also talk about his progress journey with you. Uh, they are a Spark Group retailer, 1.2 billion, billion pound, right? Privately held. Uh, so Andrew, I'll introduce Andrew also in due course, right? So just to start with, uh, you know, I just want to talk about JK Tech, right? What we are and what do we do? Unfortunately, you can't see this somehow, right? Technology, but we'll figure out. So JK Tech is where we are from. And we are a part of JK Group, which is $8 billion conglomerate, present in 10 countries. And we have, we service, we have multiple industries, manufacturing, energy, and all that. And we have 300 plus employees. But JK Tech is the, is the group company which focuses on IT. And we, have, we are a niche company. We have 1,300 plus employees globally. We are present in US, Europe, India, and Sri Lanka. I had the European business for JK Tech. And we are very much industry focused. We service a few industries, right? So insurance, healthcare, retail, CPG, and manufacturing. That are the industries we serve. And we are focused on a few technologies on to accelerate digital transformation. We don't do everything. So we are focused on modernization and data transformation, which I'll explain in the next slide. What do we do, right? And what we are doing is we have a framework of digital transformation enabled by data transformation, which I'll explain what does it mean, right, in the, in the subsequent slide. So this is briefly about us. Now, what, what is digital transformation we are aiming for and what is the end goal, right? So digital da transformation, what we mean is to enable data and application transformation to actually make your organization data-driven organization because it's all about data. So you actually have to modernize to have an end goal, right? So we are talking of two things, to make you a data-driven organization and also a process-efficient organization. That's our vision which we are working for. And two aspects, modernization and automation. Modernization is about, of course, enabling scalability and agility which we will do through data enablement and cloud transformation. These are the two elements we'll focus on. Automation, I'll explain better in the next slide. It's about process efficiency. We, we talk through hyper automation and AI ML, which will, of course, uh, you know, integrate with your data, transform data organization. I'll explain hyper automation better in the next slide. What is hyper automation? What is the process efficiency we are talking of? And important is that we are industry focused, industry driven, right? So we will focus on a few industries because without that industry knowledge, we would not be able to do transformation. It's not about technology, it's about business, right? So I'll, I'll explain in the next slide. What do I mean by, with an example, right? So this is what we are talking about. Now, what is that digital transformation framework we have? So I told, I spoke about modernization, application modernization. I spoke about, uh, I spoke about modernization, which is about application modernization and data enablement. So application modernization, we are speaking about re 4R framework, which is about re-platform, re-host, refactor, and rebuild. That is your application transformation we are talking about. And data transformation, what we mean is ingest. You have to pick up data from various sources within the organization, external sources. You have to pick up that data, ingest, enrich that data, 
serve your business both internal and external users make your uh, you know a data uh, uh, rich so that you can serve your business at least make it prescriptive and um, then you have to go into predictive so you would be able to predict based on past your experience what is going to be the future right that is what is data transformation and making your organization data driven and automation so this term i don't want to confuse hyper automation but i'll give you a perspective right because people are bringing in multiple terms but i just want to make life simple hyper automation as per gartner is about bringing in various components to do end to end business process transformation so it is about process you bring in various components you don't have to bring everything right but certain components you will bring process rpa workforce low code no code ai ml and certain elements to do end to end business process transformation as per gartner for 2021 and beyond this is one of the top 10 technology trends and this will exist peacefully with your infrastructure already present infrastructure if you have a progress landscape sap landscape it will exist peacefully i'll just give you an example of what is hyper automation so for retail customers retail and cpg right people like andrew customer return impacts 4% of your bottom line you know you we all return right my wife buys lot of things and she asks me to return because she is slightly embarrassed that she has bought so much stuff and they will ask question why are you returning so she says you go and return it right so i know right so it impacts 4% of bottom line so how do i look at that customer return process end to end process and if it is 15 days can i bring it to 7 days that is hyper automation transformation of a business process from an end to end perspective you bring in so what you have to do you have to bring in process you have to figure out your process today it's 15 days end to end process you have to maybe put bots some place rpa right people talk about automation as rpa no or rpa is just one element of one process you can do through rpa then you bring in you know your uh, your uh, workflow so for example i know this process is taking maximum time so a customer returns i have to first check whether he has actually uh, is within the stipulated parameter so that process i'm sending an email there is a workflow somebody has to approve i'll automate it right and then ai ml because i will recommend the customer if you have if you if let's say the stock is not there he wants a new product like amazon we recommend right this is the new product you can get so i'll leverage ai ml then i have to integrate this entire process so i need integration to integrate with the back end with the shipment all that right so that is hyper automation and we are talking about building some end to end processes around some of the verticals which i discuss like retail insurance manufacturing some business process we will work with the customer to explore hyper automation right from an end to end perspective now the core system does not matter you could be an oracle shop but i will be able to do these things for you however if you are progress qad sap or other platforms like microsoft or java i can also help you in your core data and systems right i can help you for development enhancement support verification and validation if you have these systems with you because we are strong in these systems but however for modernization and automation you could be an oracle shop i can still help you right so that's the that's where we are coming in from and because it's a progress session i i will talk about progress modernization you know just drill down to progress modernization making sense right i wanted somebody else to say yes yeah i should not say yes to it yeah so what what is jk tech and progress right so we are progress themselves have recognized us as the first global system integrator for progress for digital transformation we have public press release from progress anybody from progress here nobody right okay we are probably let me clarify this statement because all the vendors are there probably the largest if not the largest maybe second largest progress integrator in the world we have 300 plus progress consultant system integrator i'll clarify not an isp but a system integrator right we have strong progress capability uh with 500 plus people humongous progress modernization experience 
and, and whole lot of you know experienced uh, DX consultants. Important thing is we will give you a kind of outcome based approach. So if you are doing you support, we will say okay, we will take out cost 40 percent. If you are doing modernization, we will commit 50, 20 percent productivity. We can get give you outcome based model, right. Of course, all these are there, we have strong all that, this is covered, right. So just to give you a perspective, if, if you are a progress shop, you need to talk to JK Tech, right. If you are a football fan, you need to know Pele, that's how it is, right, kind of, yeah. But a lot of people might not know Pele, but that's a separate issue, right. So I want to introduce Andrew now. Andrew, uh, as I told, uh, is from AF Blackboard, he's the head of IT development and uh, progress shop, he'll explain his uh, modernization. Andrew, you have also talk good about JK Tech as discussed, right? Uh, you know, so over to you, Andrew. Okay, thanks. Um, you have to put me on you. Even more. So yeah, I'm Andrew Jones, uh, head of IT of AF, AF Blakemore, uh, and we're a food wholesaler, supplying about 1,500 stores, which are spa stores, they could be, um, uh, restaurants and uh, service stations and, and, uh, and one of our biggest, um, biggest uh, increases in customer at the moment is something called instant convenience. So these are people who will deliver something to you in 10 minutes when you order it, um, usually in big cities. Um, we, uh, we're a progress house, um, so we develop uh, three, well, sorry, two warehouse management systems, uh, for one for our food service business and one for our, our spa or retail business, if you, call, if you like, called MDS. And we also develop um, something we call a hub, which as far as a bit complex throughout the UK, or as com complex throughout the world, actually. And there are five ho wholesalers within, um, within the spa in the UK. And we host what we call a hub, which tries to allow us to look like one, uh, one business for national customers. All, all of those systems are written in progress. Um, this is uh, 11.75. We use Paso app servers. Um, to, to host both uh, a GUI environment, um, a, a, a modernized, or we were on the modernization path, which I'll come on to in a minute, for uh, uh, an, an Angular front end, web-based front end, and we have a lot of uh, what we call legacy uh, character um, interfaces within our warehouses. Uh, we, we utilize JKT uh, for uh, a number of things. All of our support for all three of those systems um, second line is done by JKT. Traditionally, we had developers who did support as well, uh, and that was very difficult to manage from a, a priorities point of view and to hit deadlines simply because support jumps in ahead of development, the development um, priorities, and, and therefore it was difficult to hit those deadlines. So we decided to engage with JKT to, to take on all of our second line support. Uh, we also utilize them for uh, supplementing our development and we develop in a number of different places. So not just progress, but we also utilize JKT for our Power BI and our SQL developments because we have very small teams um, within, the, within our business for those and we're able to utilize, we're able to utilize JKT to, to supplement the, um, the resource that we need uh, to, to enhance those, uh, those developments. We, we, we traditionally used to try and build everything ourselves in-house. And over the years, we've, uh, we've realized that we simply aren't a big enough team to be able to do that. I mean, our focus as a business is on food wholesaling. We're not an IT company. Uh, and therefore, our, 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 our division, our, our, the, IT, the IT group, is relatively small within the business because the commercial parts of the business, trading, uh, procurement, uh, and sales, is, is our focus, really. Um, so we've decided over, over the last sort of probably about seven, five to seven years to look at third party products for things that we probably aren't the best at developing. We, we'll never have enough time and investment in our, biz, in, our, in our parts of the business in order to do the development on, on best of breed products. So what we do now is we look outside and integrate. So we use Paragon for our route planning, Transcend for Scion Glass for deliveries, Blue Tree for vehicle tracking. Um, and we have to use the, uh, the, the uh, TPT, which is the, the tobacco track and trace, because it's a legal obligation for, for anyone who supplies uh, cigarettes. And we, we, 
we supply a lot of cigarettes. It's actually cigarettes and alcohol are probably the two largest products, commodities that we, we actually deliver to our customers, being convenience stores predominantly. Uh, so we, we utilize all of those things, usually via APIs these days. So we're using REST. And we're on a modernization path at the moment where we're, we're enabling our warehouse management systems uh, to, to have uh, a, a, an API uh, backend, if you like, using the Paso App Server to develop our Angular front end. Um, so we started, we, we originally started this because we were getting certainly at, at busy times in the, biz, in the business, which is just before, sort of two months before Easter and around about the same time before Christmas, because we're working way ahead of, of the actual events themselves, we were finding that we were struggling with resource uh, as far as systems are concerned and also as far as uh, sessions were concerned. We were hitting the maximum number of sessions um, re regularly, uh, and we decided that we were going to go down a PASO uh, route in order to share, um, share agents and, and therefore uh, only talk to the database for the user and connect to the database when we needed to as opposed to just logging in. And some people would log in and, and then, then maybe walk away for a couple of hours and come back later and they'd be, they'd be taking the sessions on, on the system. So it's one of the reasons why we wanted to go to modernization. And also because personally I was fed up of new people coming into the business, especially uh, younger people uh, considering our system to be legacy. It's very, very um, feature rich. Uh, it's fit for purpose, but it does look like it was written in the 90s, which a lot of it was. Um, so we wanted to go to a web front end. We, we need to support lots of different devices these days, um, specifically because a lot of the devices that are in the warehouses um, traditionally were Windows CE, uh, Windows Mobile pro uh, products, and that's no longer supported. It doesn't exist anymore. Uh, and they're all being replaced by Android. Um, and we don't want to really terminal emulate for those, for those devices, so we want to use the native browser on them. So it's another reason to, to move into the modernization arena. Um, so we, we've started that path. We're writing our APIs. We've made them as generic as we can uh, in order to, to speed up the process of, of deployment of, of particular parts of the business. So we've actually written APIs that we can just give a table name and it will return the entire table. And then the front end guys who've got a lot more time than the back end guys to develop can then sift through that data and, and expose it to the users. And we're utilizing JKT a lot for this because they have experience in, in writing APIs um, and we're just new to it, if you like. So we're, we, we're very internally, we're very uh, involved in the architecture. Um, my, my internal team wanted to be part of that. Uh, but with a lot of advice and the experience that JKT have given us along the way. I think that's uh, more or less me, so yeah. should we just hand back? Don't change the slide yet, right? You have to, hey Shirish, take a photograph of Andrew presenting, or maybe we'll take it from the video, yeah? So, uh, um, yeah, so basically, Andrew's boss, Robert, who's the CIO of AFB, is meeting my boss today, right, uh, in, La in, London, uh, in Leicester. So we started with progress and, and, and journey, and now we are talking about data transformation and other initiatives, right? So, you know, as I had explained, you modernize for a reason, right? And that's what we are talking about. How do you modernize to actually uh, go to the, go, uh, make yourself a data-driven organization? Next slide, right? So what are the consideration of modernization, right? Business consideration. So I don't have to go through this, we are all aware, but what I see is that UX experience and time to market are the most critical, right? Uh, what I have, what, when we talk to customers, right? They are talking about UX experience, time to market, and flexible architecture, right? So if scaling, ability to scale and being flexible is, is, is what customers are talking of from a business standpoint. And from a business consideration perspective, again, you know, you have to overcome your legacy barriers. Everybody talks about cloud, but it's always about the right cloud strategy. What should be on-prem? What should go to cloud? How do you integrate across, right? Stability and performance, I don't have to speak. And TCO, right, it's so, it's so obvious, total cost of ownership. 
uh, you know, we didn't bother to put it, but that's also important, right? So uh, these are the tech considerations, right? Uh, for, uh, uh, you know, business considerations for modernization. Also, what are the technology con considerations? Of course, I don't have to go through everything, but a lot of customers are talking about end-tier architecture and microservices, very critical. Private, you know, cloud, what cloud journey I should do, whether I can go to cloud at all or not. I've already spoken a lot about uh, data, right? So how do you actually make yourself a data-driven organization, right? If you're doing modernization, just for sake of it, without being, a, a, you know, considering data, it's, it's not uh, true modernization. And secondly, CI/CD is critical. So I have a customer uh, in the UK, a tech company. They do 400 releases a week, right? You know, and you can meet me offline. I'll tell them what they, who they are. But yeah, so that's that's what we are talking about, right? So. How do you actually, you know, modernize in real sense, you know? And the 4R framework, if you look at from a progress standpoint, right? Customers are in various journey. And, and it's not necessary that if you're in one journey, it's not a cyclic thing. It is all dependent on a lot of factors which we spoke about. So it could just be a platform or a version upgrade. You know, you have, you're stuck with the older version, you want to go to the latest version. I have a customer in UK, they are on the oldest version of Windows platform, right, which sits on top of progress. Uh, they are struggling with the OS upgrade. Uh, they have some challenges, they're not able to upgrade it, right? So it just could be a version upgrade from an OS and a platform level. The second is re-host, you know, lift and shift. You actually, you know, either you move the front end to cloud or you are you know, business logic to cloud or both, or, you know, hybrid model, uh, that's uh, critical. And the third is, you know, you are doing actual transformation, right? You are actually looking at your new front end and a new business logic, where you actually do refactor. So you're going into end tier, you're optimizing business logic, making it DevOps cloud enablement, that is actually the refactor. And the fourth is, of course, a lot of customers want to move out of progress, right? So progress modernization is also about helping customers who want to move out of progress, right? There is also a journey involved. So you might go to progress to, you know, other open systems. You would have a web and mobile, you know, micro front end, entire architecture. And earlier it was fragmented apps. So you were, you know, content management, business application, secure, they were all separate, but today, you can, you know, you can have one platform and various functions, right? So that is the, you know, 4R framework for modernization uh, that we bring on table. Look, I spoke about accelerators, right? So this is just an example of a test automation framework we have. In a progress journey, what we have realized, if you are doing any of those four, which I explained, 30% of time could just go to testing in a journey, right? If you have one year, uh, you know, plan, three months could go in testing. So testing takes 33% of your time, approximately, right? 25 to 30. And we have a framework for test automation, which would automate your test process to a great extent, and you would get 33% productivity gain. And it is easy to deploy, right? It's tool agnostic, platform agnostic. It has already pre-built work workflows and it requires very little coding, right? Just to give you an example of some of the accelerators that we have, right? And we are of course talking to Andrew about that, right? And I don't want to go into details of the case studies, uh, you know, but each of the customers, Andrew has spoken, so we have not put, so we have ex worked with large customers in multiple phases, right? Whether it's re-platforming, refactoring, rebuilt, right? We have worked with customers. And the perspective we do ask customer is how many lines of code do you have? And if you have less than 1 million lines of code, you know, we, you know it is not an interesting case for us. So we work with customers who have more than 1 million lines of code. So if you have more complex, we will like it more, right? Otherwise, you know, uh, you understand, right? So maybe you, you're better off working with other partners because that's the complexity we want to work with, right? And 
this is important also, what is the engagement life cycle of framework we have. So there is a framework. So most important is this discover, assess and strategize phase. And we bring in people like Shirish, right, who's a principal architect. And Shirish, just uh, would you want to talk through this? Because I just want him to give a perspective. Uh, so first we have gone through what is the architect. We are 8, bil 8 billion and uh, 300,000 employees with us. And we have focused through that particular domain, all those things. Then we, ha we have gone through uh, why modernization is required, right? Why modernization is required? Before doing some, uh, is that something giving advantage to us? Yes. Then, then we talked about what considerations we need to look into, like cloud, DevOps, and uh, re-platforming, uh, moving from open edge uh, older version to the newer version. Is that really giving advantage to us? That's what we need to consider, right? Once we have got all the clarity on that, then we will see how we are going to, how as a JK Tech, we are going to uh, bring you into the latest modernization. Okay, so our discovery and engagement life cycle is majorly for accelerating the modernization. Okay, indeed we have uh, various stages involved. Uh, majorly uh, discovery, assessment, strategize, and then the delivery phase. Okay, in this, uh, uh, when, we, when we go through this discovery, assessment, and strategize, we majorly focus on business objectives what really is business required, and then process complexity. How much complexity does we involve in your application? And then we map, we laid the map, your technology landscape, all your technical aspects, third parties, whatever it could be. Uh, your SOAP services, and uh, whatever link to the third parties, everything we will, we will give a map to you. And we, we, this will be taking almost Every, every phase we have the same objectives because we are very well focused on that objectives. And this span will be for six to 12 weeks, okay? And why six to 12 weeks is your application is a big size it could be or a complexity involved in that application, right? So this will, this will take almost six to 12 weeks based on your existing application, okay? Ultimately, we will give you what is the ROI you are getting from this so that you can take a decision. Okay, once all these steps have been done, this input will be taken and then we will try to create your robust plan for your modernization journey. Okay, because uh, we got all your landscape, your architecture, your all complexities involved, maybe DLLs, while moving 64 bit, if you want to move to 64 bit DLL, that could be a big, big task. So based on your input and your objectives, we will create a robust plan for you. Okay, once the plan is clear, then we will, uh, we will based on your plan, we'll create a design for you. It could be architecture, or it could be some modification in the code, and some DLLs are being, oh, I mean, it being <coughs> absolute, so we can bring a new, uh, from the progress, or some new DLL into the picture, and then we pilot it, and then migrate the application, and test and optimize. Okay, and testing also, we will be doing very regressively, okay? So that you don't uh, get into a difficult situation later on. Once, we, once the test, test is being properly placed and optimization is done, then we deploy it, okay? This all will be, uh, we follow the agile methodology in delivering, delivering this software and it would take 13 weeks for each release. If your, if your, up, if your project goes bigger than 13 weeks, then you will have multiple releases on that, okay? And then we will try to uh, deploy it. And we try to undertake L1 and uh, L2 and L3 support with whatever features we have delivered till now. Once this modernization journey is over and we have deployed, then you have then we will undertake L1 and L2. What we have what features we have delivered. 
time using this multi-layer AMS services support. Okay. So this is this is our journey, and uh, this is we have done for all, most of the, all the customers actually. Okay. And moreover, I can talk more on architectures and case studies we have. You can come to us because if we could see some retail, so we can talk more on retail perspective. If you are from manufacturing, we can talk more on manufacturing perspective. So those you can come to our booth and we can give you the architecture patterns based on your architectures also. We can talk on that. And uh, yeah, anything you want to, uh, any questions on this, we are open to that. Not only on this, but the entire presentation. Anyway, so just to, uh, you know, Shishi, thank you for this, right? Yeah. I just want to give you a quick perspective is that the most important is, of course, this assessment phase, six to 12 weeks. After this, you might not even decide to modernize, you know, once we say this is the cost or ROI, right? And uh, <laughs> important, right? So it's not, it, it is not naturally leading to this. This is where you will take a pause and say, boss, look, we have to figure out, right, how, what we have to do. And we are not a consulting company uh, where we want to make a lot of money in consulting. So a lot of time we work with the customer, uh, you know, at a cost model for this assessment phase. Right, so that's that's an approach uh, we also do. So this discovery assessment, so people like Shiri spend a lot of time. So uh, he would be working with a UK customer from 5th of September doing a six to eight week assessment, right? So we work with a lot of customers in this phase. This is very critical and this actually is a call and we will work in multiple models. You don't have to do everything with us. You can say, okay, maybe you do this piece, I'll do this piece. So it will be a model we will evolve jointly, right? Uh, in the journey and and you know uh, that's that's the thing i wanted to just highlight i think this comes to the end of the presentation right we had some other few slides also like our uh, you know scenarios architecture patterns and all that but i think like shiri has discussed it would be good if you can come to the booth we can spend more time right rather than going into too much details based on your parameter we can we can spend time with you so with this, uh, you know, we, love, we leave the floor open to question. Anybody has any questions online also? Uh, how will we capture online questions if we, anything comes through? Sorry? I couldn't get it. Uh, online. Okay, good. We didn't know that, right? So, anybody has any questions uh, from the audience? We are good. Everybody is waiting for the drinks break or? No? I should have said each question you will win a prize. Yeah, but we are available. I think thank you for the time. And look, people who have participated in this session and also who came to our booth, give us the visiting card. Tomorrow we will be doing a lucky draw and announcing a price, right? Uh, so we will tell you the time slot and we, maybe we'll come. Is anybody going to the, today who's here? Everybody is here tomorrow, right? Yeah. yeah. So one of you will get this uh, Apple watch. Yeah, this one. So we'll do a lucky draw and, and let you know. Okay. Thank you. Thank you again. And we have finished on time. So this is... Time to market, right? You do it faster. Thank you. Thank you.